Good morning, everyone. It's Maury. You can see that I'm standing in front of my 2018 Heimer Active. Um, I've had my coffee this morning, so I'm actually willing to talk to you. Uh, so this video will be um, a little bit about the camper itself in a real world test. I took it out for the first time uh, over the weekend and um, worked out some details, things that I would do differently, things that worked well, things that maybe didn't work so well. And uh, it's not gonna be a complaint video, but I am gonna talk about some of the things that I found as I've gotten used to uh, the rig. But uh, let's get started. Okay, so we'll start with this. Um, I had done a previous video, a review of this unit, which is the uh, Maijo single cup uh, Keurig coffee maker. This is a manual coffee press that uses uh, K-cups. Um, in theory, it makes great sense. It's a great idea. However, if you have access to electricity, then it's more trouble than it's worth. So if you're off the grid, if you're camping, or uh, you have no batteries or electricity at all, and you're heating water on a campfire, um, then this actually works really well. If you have access to electricity, you're better off just getting a personal Keurig coffee maker, which is what I have since done. Um, and making it that way. The real problem is that it took so much time to heat the water and then press the coffee and try not to make a mess that it ends up being more trouble than it's worth, which is a shame. I mean, I really like it. I wanted to like it uh, in the field and it just didn't quite, didn't quite make it. So, you know, lesson learned. The, uh, my Joe here was 12 or $13, maybe $14 on Amazon. Um, the personal Keurig that I just purchased was 20 at Walmart. And, um, you know, it'll plug into AC power right there. And it'll be um, a lot simpler process and cleaner. You know, the, the manual here uh, tends to be a little messy. So unfortunately, it uh, is gonna go into storage, but you know, I'll keep it in case I'm camping or somebody else needs it. But yeah, that's being replaced with the actual Keurig machine. So this is another complaint that I had. Um, the fit and finish, attention to detail from Heimer has been hit or miss. Um, this plastic cover here um, was actually set back a little bit in order to cover this gap. Um, there's a couple of things wrong. One, it was attached with 3M foam tape. And two, the chair rail, when you rotate it, doesn't actually clear the plastic. And you can even see how it's scratched here already from when I was trying to rotate the seat. So I did make some fabric skirts, and you can see a little bit of it up underneath here. And that allows you to rotate the seats freely. Um, the passenger side is no different, but I didn't like the way that it looks. Part of the problem also is the heater duct um, is above the floor line, and so in order to have this flush mounted against the frame, I had to cut out an opening uh, in order for it to clear. Uh, Heimer chose not to do that. They instead just moved it back to cover the gap and clear the uh, heater duct. Um, I did some cutting, opened this up, uh, shaved off some of the rough edges that they left when they cut their plastic, and then just screwed it into the rubber plugs in the um, chair frame. Um, you know, it doesn't really, I mean, you can still turn the seat, it's going to rub this, but aesthetically I chose to have the actual cover. Um, because the likelihood of me rotating these seats often um, is pretty small. All right, this was a choice that was great. Um, these are WeatherTech uh, sunshades. The opposite side is silver, heat reflective. Um, there are five panels total. They fit in neatly into these window spaces and also the windshield. Um, the set was about $130 on the WeatherTech website, and 
these are awesome, especially, well, especially the side ones. Um, they're easy to put in, easy to take off. The ones that come with the Heimer are a single piece magnetic, which is nice, but they're pretty heavy. Um, they do an okay job. The one for the windshield that came with the Heimer weighs a ton and it's so difficult to use and it gets hot. Um, Amber Baldwin mentioned that also and um, I have to agree. The WeatherTech one that you see here um, is very lightweight. It's a big piece of glass so it's a challenge to get in and out no matter what. But um, it was definitely a good investment. And then you also see up here, this is something I learned while I was driving, um, the extension visor is uh, a good addition. Um, there's a lot of light that comes in through these windows, especially when the sun is uh, right in your in your view. So I would I would recommend these. Um, they were eleven dollars on Amazon. They clip on, and uh, yeah, they work really well. Very impressed with the refrigerator. Yeah, it did take a little while for it to cool down, but um, it doesn't seem to draw a lot of power. I had the batteries on all night and um, you know it ran and it wasn't very loud. People have talked about how loud that is and uh, you know I didn't really experience that. Air conditioning worked really well. I was parked at a campground and took a nap. It was about 91 degrees outside and ran the air conditioning. The AC ran for over two hours on battery power before it kicked on the volt start. Um, the AC is kind of loud, um, but the white noise actually worked really well for me, so it, I didn't mind it so much. The good things, um, on my trip, so I went from the uh, Metro Phoenix area up to Prescott, which is uh, up in the mountains, um, kind of. I mean, the elevation change is a few thousand uh, feet. Um, it did really well going up the hill and coming down the hill it was stable and um, I didn't have any issues with it. Drivability is good. It actually drives really well for being a fairly large and heavy vehicle. Um, it drives, you know, well, I mean obviously the Jeep is going to drive differently, but um, it was very easy to drive. And I averaged um, on the way up um, over 15 miles per gallon on the way down, which was easy, uh, almost 22. So on flat ground, I think that, um, you know, 16 to 20 is probably, uh, you know, very reachable. All right, so my Heimer came with the Sony head unit. This is the AX200. Um, there is a firmware update for it that will allow the warning screen to go off by itself um, from the factory. Uh, you may notice that you have to press the OK or Acknowledge button. The um, firmware update bypasses that, so it'll still show the warning, but then it will continue on if you don't press the OK or Acknowledge button. Um, stereo itself is OK. You know, the speakers that they put in here, I took one of them out because it was rattling. Uh, that one up there, it was buzzing during music playback. Um, they're Pioneer speakers. You know, there are two ways, nothing fancy. I may end up replacing them at some point. Um, it would be nice, you know, with such a large cabin, it's hard to fill it with sound. Um, there are speakers up front here as well, but um, I think that I may end up replacing those at some point with something that's a little more suitable. Um, you know, a decent three-way with some throw. Not a lot of bass in here, even with the bass assist feature in the head unit, um, it's just not great. The mounting kit, you know, this uh, originally came with one of the RAM Uconnect radios, and this was added on. Um, and I'm guessing it's mainly because it has the input for the backup camera. Um, and, you know, the screen is nice. Um, actually, the screen is pretty decent, especially when you're, uh, when you're watching it for the backup camera. Um, Hands-free operation, the microphone is wired up here. Um, Hands-free, I was told, sounds okay, but again, you're dealing with the sound quality on this side of it, and hearing the person I was talking to was difficult without really turning it up. That might go away if I 
or at least be improved if I change the speakers out. Um, this bezel pops off and exposes the radio. I did find that you know this unit just kind of sits in place. Um, it's not screwed in or attached. And um, I actually put in some foam uh, on the bottom and top to keep it in place because before it was, you could actually move it. Um, and so I had some rigid foam rubber that I put in there just to shore it up and uh, now no vibrations or anything like that. Okay, TV and Blu-ray. Um, TV is a Samsung 24 inch. The, uh, the bracket is a little finicky. You know, it's got a spring-loaded uh, retainer that has to line up a certain way. Blu-ray is LG. Um, I actually had one of these in my uh, storage, um, and this is the same one that came with the rig, which is fortunate because the remote control for it was missing, so I just used the one that I already had. Um, I also had an issue with the playback. I could get TV on the TV, just fine, TV reception, but no video from the Blu-ray uh, Blu player. And so the TV could see it, it could sense that there was a video feed connected, but there was no video. After a significant amount of troubleshooting, um, two things uh, came from that. One, the HDMI cable coming from the Blu-ray into the cabinetry into the HDMI splitter was bad. Um, that one wasn't as obvious. I thought that uh, it was odd that it would still throw a signal. But either way, cable ended up being bad and I replaced it. But I think that the bad HDMI cable also caused the HDMI splitter to fail. Rather than take it up to La Mesa for replacement, um, I just spent the $16 on Amazon to buy and uh, a replacement. It was basically the same uh, splitter, just with a different name on it, and everything works fine now. Just another little attention to detail, the retaining clip for the bed, um, not that it was out of place, but it just didn't extend out far enough to latch the bed in place, so I have a couple of washers on the back side of this to raise the, the back uh, stop out from the wall a little. And then on the bed itself, I also mounted some felt underneath it to bring it off of the bed frame just slightly. Um, and now it latches in place and holds itself against the backstop like it's supposed to so that it doesn't rattle. I mean, it still rattles a little bit, but it was moving quite a bit. And it was actually possible to push it past the stop uh, in its original state. So now that is taken care of. Just another attention to detail item. Um, this black trim piece, when it was mounted, had the screw in the bottom here. Um, and then it screws into, not the frame, but it screws into the, the backing of the, uh, the seal here. But it was open here and this plastic was bowed out because it's pressing against the flooring. And you, you can even see where it was originally and how much pressure there was because it's dented the laminate flooring, I guess it's not even laminate, but um, it's like linoleum or vinyl, but it had, it's actually dented it right here because of the pressure. But I put in another screw and that's flattened this out. And that also helps uh, with the ceiling for the screen, um, which was the reason that I did it anyway, because it wasn't, it wasn't flush. But, you know, an extra screw and that seems to have taken care of the problem. All right, well, that's kind of a first pass through the rig. Uh, a few things that have come up as I've gotten used to it and um, things that came up while I was actually using it in practice. Uh, one other thing that I didn't show is I've ordered a set of the Sumo Springs for the rear end, um, in part because of the reviews that I saw, but also because of the ground clearance. Um, they're supposed to provide an inch or so of additional lift in the rear. And as you probably know, ground clearance is at a premium, um, especially if you look underneath and you see just how much is exposed and hanging down. 
so anything uh, will be helpful, I think. Um, plus they help with body roll and body sway over um, curves and speed bumps and things like that. So that's uh, order and they'll be here in a week or so. And um, in the meantime, I'm kind of planning my next uh, adventure. You know, the overnight to Prescott was just that. It was an overnight that wasn't very far. Um, my next one will probably be uh, up the West Coast. So I'll go out um, the 10, start around Los Angeles and start heading north. I have family in Washington State and I'll end up in beautiful Seebeck, Washington and um, see how long it takes to get there and where I end up staying. Um, it's gonna be an interesting experience. That won't be right away. That'll probably be the end of September, beginning of October. Um, my brother's birthday is in October, so I'm thinking that's probably why I would go. So um, I hope this was at least somewhat interesting. You know, I feel like I'm stumbling through it, but you know, I'm stumbling through the RV as well um, as I figure it out. So as I learn, so will you. And if you have any questions or comments or anything that you might suggest um, to me as a new owner, uh, please feel free to post them in the comments below. Appreciate it and have a great day.